Hey, what's up everybody? BDL44 coming at you another video. All right, so I'm fresh off watching two hours of media day coverage for the LA Lakers. And y'all know I haven't made an LA Laker chat video in a very long time for my standards, but we're back, man. Saturday starts up the preseason game. I believe it's against the Warriors. I think that's who we play. And um, usually I don't really get caught up on media day. I I'm not a media day guy. A lot of times it feels like guys don't really want to be there. Sometimes they take the pictures and they sit down. But, you know, this year I just want to kind of get a little more caught up because we have so many new faces. Uh, and, and it's really important that you get involved in media day when your team doesn't expect the need to make a trade. <laughs> like we did last year at the start of the season, we just knew our team wasn't complete. So it was a different vibe for me this year in terms of media day. And, and I really enjoyed what I saw there, all two hours of it. Um, and, and I tell you, man, the one thing that everyone was talking about was the depth of the team. Uh, we, I think it's pretty much unanimous that everybody agrees with me when I say this is the deepest team in basketball. From top to bottom, there are no scrubs on this roster, and I'm really, really proud of Rob Palenka, Jeannie Buss, and everybody involved putting together a squad like this that we can believe in and, and probably withstand injury within reason. Of course, we want to keep our core as healthy as possible, but you know for a fact that even if for some reason we have issues with our injuries, we know we have guys that we're coming up with after that who can play without a doubt who can pr provide multiple things and still keep our play style being very versatile and that's one of the things that Darvin Ham was mentioning is the fact that he has so many different things he could do he has a tall lineup he has a small lineup he has a fast lineup it's just a lot of stuff that he can mix and match it and put together and by the time uh you know mid-season comes around this is just my opinion we're gonna have a lot of different things to throw at just about everybody in the league you know, listening to AR-15, I agree with him as well when he said that you're going to have to game plan for all 14 of our guys. You're not going to know who's going to play in certain cases. And because of it, you're going to need to scout on all of them. So it's like, it's going to be almost like scouting two teams. We're not a shallow squad to where you can just pick eight guys and say, okay, let's figure out what those guys can do. Nah, you're going to find out if you don't, we're going to be able to knock you off because at the end of the day, just about everybody on this team has multiple things that they could do uh, at any given moment, and, and the, the versatility is just unbelievable. So I'm excited about that. You know, I was listening to Christian Wood, uh, and he was talking about how this is a, a, a motivating year for him, one of the most motivated seasons he's had. Uh, he wants to, to kind of put away some of those narratives. Uh, he's excited about playing with Anthony Davis specifically, uh, kind of having that defense to offense type of thing where they can help one another with each other's uh, weaknesses, so to speak. Uh, and, and I'm really excited about that. I don't know if Darvin Ham's going to use them together as much as I want him to because a lot of times he likes to go to small ball lineups naturally. But um, we have so many tall and big lineup players um, at just about every position. I think the shortest guy on the team may be Gabe Vincent at like 6'3", and we know he's defensive-minded and can hit some shots, catch and shoot, and things like that. Uh, so I'm really excited about Christian Wood being on this team specifically just because of the length that he and AD provide one another. And you couple that with, with the subs who can come in like Castleton if we have on a two-way contract. Um, uh, what's what's my, my guy's name? Uh, Jackson Hayes, who's also a, a super high fly act with, at seven feet, one of the most athletic centers in the game. Uh, you just love what we saw there, man. Gabe Vincent is a guy who I think is really going to help in the locker room as well. I think his personality is going to bounce well off guys like Austin Reeve and D'Lo. Uh, you know, and, and just looking at LeBron, you know, to year 21, he looks good. Uh, he's ready to go. He said that he basically had a real tendon issue. I don't remember exactly how it was worded, but the tendon was real messed up in his foot. But his body's healed up from that, and he's had a really good off season. And he was just, you know, excited about uh, seeing his sons play basketball. Kind of got him motivated for this year to kind of come back and, 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 and rejuvenate himself for the work necessary to get back in shape. Uh, you know, that type of thing was, was really, really uh, poignant hearing him speak about uh, how he liked what he saw from a uh, roster construction standpoint. He was really excited and motivated uh, based on the depth that the team has. And so, you know, that was that was really big. You know, I really like seeing him, uh, you know, kind of launch everything off uh, with Media Day. They talked to Rui Hachimura as well. Rui's been working with Braun. You can see he's kind of starting to phrase words like Braun. You can see he's really been hanging out with him. And, uh, you know, that's really what guys were saying, you know, just I think it was uh, it was it was him and, and, and also Christian Wood who mentioned how, uh, you know, LeBron's work ethic is, is, is kind of rubbing off on them and making them want to push themselves a little further, uh, you know, and, and it's just it's a really, really good vibe to start 
this off season. I think everybody is excited. Everybody's talking championship. Uh, you know, Max Christie, I, I, they were speaking to him, and he was talking about how he's been working on his game, and he's excited about coming in and showing people what he can do. He's kind of gotten reacclimated um, based on the fact that he had a, a rookie season with the big squad and kind of is ready to show people what he can do. You know, he, he paid his dues sitting, and now it's time to show. Um, you know what I mean? Anthony Davis, of course, he, he got the bag this off season. And so he's he's just coming in. You know, he said he had a really good off-season workout. His foot is also feeling pretty good, and he's ready to rock. And so it's just a lot of good there, man. D'Lo also, and in, in, in the you know his his he was talking about how he's uh, you know the difference between him when he was a rookie and and now his eating habits have changed. He's more of a professional at this point, uh, and just he's excited to going into year nine. Uh, and is on a list of, of, of players who've scored the most three-point shots over the last nine years. And so, you know, with some of the names like Steph Curry and Buddy Yield, Clay Thompson on that list, it's just good to see D'Lo's name on that list as well. So it was just a lot there, man, to take in over the last two hours, uh, just enjoying media day and seeing the vibes from top, top to bottom. Everybody's just really excited. Uh, Gabe Vincent mentioned that he's actually a West Coast kid. I don't think I actually knew that. He's from Stockton, California. Um and, you know, he feels good to be back home, man, even though Stockton is a little further up, closer, uh, you know, halfway to the bay more or less. But still, his family can come down here and watch the games. And it just, you know, it's one of those situations where he believes he can take a lot of what he learned from heat culture and bring it to L.A. Uh, and, and the fact that he played in the finals, had a really good playoffs this all, this uh, past season. Uh, the momentum is strong for him coming into this year. So we just got a really deep team, man. I tell y'all, there's not a team in this league that has more quality players from top to bottom. And when I was talking about the Boston Celtics, the Milwaukee Bucks, some of these other teams, Cleveland Cavaliers, they don't have that luxury this year. They're going to be bringing some guys off the bench who we should be able to smoke with our second and third units. And I think it's going to help us win games if we if we do what we're supposed to do and use everybody. Um, guys are going to have to respect the fact that they're going to be nights where they sit because of it, you know. There are going to be some really quality players that you want to see on the floor, and it's going to be up to Darwin to use the right ones at the right time, and that's just not going to be the easiest decision to, to make uh, with a team this deep. Um, but at the end of the day, it's 81 games, and we have a championship goal, which means that our, we're going to have to rest people. Obviously, we expect some injuries, hopefully nothing serious at all, but guys are going to get their opportunities if they remain patient and keep their, their, their the humility about them and their humble uh, attitude about it. I think they're going to be... Uh, opportunities for everyone throughout the course of the season. We're going to see them all. And uh, this is going to be a good season for the Lakers, man. So long as we can keep our core intact, healthy, uh, you know, with Austin Reeves coming back after playing the FIBA World Championship, getting his money, and now, you know, kind of had him an opportunity to settle in. He was saying how excited he was to be back with the Lakers. And uh, although it was a bit stressful for him to kind of have to deal with free agency a little bit, ultimately it became a fun circumstance once they started to settle in and what their options were. And, uh, you know, he had a really good, good off season. You know, he was talking about how he, he remembers, uh, in the, in the, in the, uh, in his first, uh, playoff game, he didn't have a good first half, but LeBron James was telling him, you know, it's a different game and he's play on the playoffs, man. And Bron had given him the ball in like seven straight possessions. And he was saying to himself, I can't make Bron look dumb out here. I gotta make something happen. And he was able to, and, and that's the confidence that we have in Austin as a team and as, as a fan base. I think that this is going to be a player that continues to to mesh well with everybody on the team. He's an extension of ball movement, an extension of defense. And uh, if he can continue to shoot at the percentage that he, he's been able to uh, from behind the arc, I, I don't. It's, it's, it's going to be very difficult for us to be beaten by really anybody. And so my, my expectations for this team is not quite championship, only because I think we're going to probably be leaning on some young guys a little more than we want to with new chemistry second year coach but at the end of the day we have the recipe to win a championship and i think everybody's on the same page about that being our absolute goal um you know i think i look at a guy like Jalen hushafino i don't remember getting a chance to see him speak to the media in the clip that i saw but you realize that he's probably your third string backup point guard when you consider the fact that he was the 16th overall pick in the draft that just gives you an understanding of exactly how much depth you bring to the table with the los angeles laker roster um it's big, man. Rui Hachimura and his high shooting percentages this year. My curiosity is to see if he can actually keep that going because he was shooting above 50% from the field, above 40% from behind the arc in the playoffs, and it just didn't seem like he was missing very much. On top of that, he did a fantastic job defensively, including having some, some success against Jokic early in the series, uh, even though it wasn't much. Of course, nobody 
can guard Jokic, but we put him on Jokic and found ourselves having possessions where we were pleased with that. So, you know, it's a whole lot to like about having him possibly in the starting lineup uh, next to AD, um, next to Braun, and, and really having that big big lineup to kind of uh, uh, impose our will on teams. So it's just a lot to like, man. So much listened to there. I mean, my mind is crammed full of Lakers stuff over the last couple of hours. I thought the, the the crew that sat down with the guys, Bresnahan and all those guys, a big game James, they did a fantastic job of, of just giving us a lighthearted uh, aspect to, to, to the media day. And I think that's one of the reasons why uh, guys really tend to enjoy being Laker media day members because at the end of the day it's not going to be as tense as it is in most situations because of the guys that they have um, interviewing our, our players so I, I really thought they did a fantastic job as always and this is just a much more fun season going into it guys have been paid uh, guys know one another we're bringing in good character guys we're bringing in uh, quality depth high skill guys it's a whole lot to like about being a Laker in 2023 2024 and so I'm excited. I think the goal for us should be to try to just stay healthy since we have so much depth. It shouldn't necessarily be about can we play 82. I know Anthony Davis said he has a goal of playing 82 games. That's not going to happen because we only play 81. <laughs> but we will have that goal for him to, to try to play as much as possible. And, you know, I, I don't expect that his body is really built to play that much basketball to be honest with you I've, that's just my own personal opinion and the numbers show us that he doesn't play as much but at the end of the day if we can just have a healthy season uh guys take care of themselves to the best of their ability diet is so important as D'Lo was mentioning uh i don't think there's going to be anything stopping these lakers uh at all if we just do what we need to do throughout the course of the regular season we should be at the top of the western conference i really believe that this is going to be so much depth from which to benefit from and the versatility is, is endless. It's absolutely endless. So I'm super excited, man, with with us going into training camp. I, I don't know exactly what to expect from summer league, rather. Um, I really don't know because, you know, we're going to be mixing and matching players. And ultimately, it's not about wins and losses. It's just about figuring out rotation op options and ultimately who's going to make the team as we're going to uh, see some guys that are going to run out there that we ultimately understand will probably be two-way guys and G League guys, stuff like that, guys who probably won't make the team will be on the floor for summer league. I mean, for uh, for the preseason is what I'm trying to say, preseason. But uh, nevertheless, we will get the chance to see the depth of our team as well. And um, I'm curious to see what Braun's going to do. He's the guy that I'm looking at the most because last year he was uh, shooting the three-point ball a little more than I wanted him to, and I think a lot of that had to do with the foot not being healthy. I want to see him get back to putting rim pressure on the rim. I don't have any uh, reason to believe that his res he should be reserved about uh, being – his old self if he's healthy his body's been doing this for a long time but at the end of the day he's a different beast we all know that no one's ever played at this high level this late into their careers in the history of the sport maybe in any sport you know most of the guys who've played in 21 uh, seasons in this league only average about seven or eight points uh but at the end of the day we expect lebron james to keep his average above 25 points eight assists seven rebounds that kind of thing and um uh, I have no reason to believe that he's not going to be able to push forward the same way he always does. I just don't want to see him settle for the three as much as he did last season because it really didn't fall for him like we needed it to kind of threw some possessions away. And I expect that that's going to be something that Darvin Ham is going to try to mitigate and, and, and use the depth to our advantage so that Braun doesn't have to play uh, minutes that are not necessary uh, for him to have to settle and things of that nature. If he needs a breather and stuff like that, that should be something that we have plenty of depth for. Guys like Rui Hachimura, uh, you know, Christian Wood, they're going to be itching for opportunities. You know, uh, obviously our bigs as a whole, you know, uh, uh, Jackson Hayes, there's no reason for Brian to have to play so much um, when, he, when he doesn't have it that particular night. And at 38, 38 years of age, turn going into 39, trust you, me, I know I'm that same age. It is not going to be an every night thing where you're going to have it. But uh, ultimately, LeBron James is, is a, still a leader for our team. Even though I believe that Anthony Davis is the number one option for us, at the end of the day, we know Braun is the is the leader of the league. He's he's the he's the goat. He's the number one guy, champion, four times over, and he's going to need uh, the whole team to kind of back his play and ultimately keep this championship ex uh, expectation uh, in mind throughout the course of the season. Uh, one goal, championship. Nothing else matters. Uh, but this roster with what we have we understand that this type of depth is rare 
everything is slotted in so perfectly in our cap that we can have no scrubs on the team. Everybody should be able to get their opportunities. And that's not that's not something you're going to see every year. You know, guys are going to go off and get paid. Guys are going to move on to bigger roles, that kind of thing. This is a championship caliber year that we need to seize the moment within. And so obviously we're going to talk about the Lakers this year uh, all season long. You know, last year I covered every single game, preseason, playoffs, regular season, didn't miss a game. And I'm going to attempt to do the same thing. Obviously, circumstances in my life personally are a little different. So I don't know if I'll be able to keep the consistency I want to, but I will attempt to. And I expect that same consistency from our squad. Uh, at the end of the day, man, this is a Laker channel at, at its core. And I appreciate everybody for rocking with me over the past three or four years as we continue to follow this team. And, you know, we're going after the gusto, man. We have yet to win a championship while I've done this channel. And I think that that needs to change right away. Like I said, I didn't pick us to win the championship, but looking at how the morale of the team is going, looking at the chemistry, it looks like it's going to be possible with the different personalities that look like they're going to mesh well with one another. A uh, couple of that with Darvin Ham coming in year two when he just made the Western Conference Finals in year one. It's a hell of a feat. We know we may bump our head a little bit. There's still some, some more learning to do with our young players. We've got a lot of guys who are going to be coming in fresh, you know, on into the league trying to prove themselves. Uh, a guy like Cam Reddish is going to have an opportunity this year. Max Christie, Max Lewis, those guys will have their opportunities. And, uh, you know, a guy like Torian Prince just continues to add to the depth of the team. Excited to see him here as well. Uh, we just understand this is going to be a squad that should compete for the whole thing. And with a lot of teams that are out there who believe that they can win it, not many of them have as many quality players on their roster as we do. So that's just really what it comes down to. If you're going to beat the Lakers, you better have some good playing coming off your bench, and you better have some good guys coming off your third unit too. Don't think because Braun or AD is missing the game that you're going to have a nice evening. You may not, given the type of talent that we've got. So that's pretty much what i got to say, man. Definitely enjoyed media day. Can't wait to see the players get started on Saturday, and it's going to be a fun season one way or another. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching, and I'm out.